Kia ora. My name is Priyanka Radhakrishnan and I'm leading the government's work program to strengthen social cohesion in my capacity as the Associate Minister for Social Development and Employment. Aotearoa New Zealand is generally regarded as a country with a high level of social cohesion and we've seen that in the way that our team of 5 million has largely come together to support one another in the aftermath of the March 15th mosque attacks and more recently through the COVID lockdowns. Uh, well, Emmanuel Kalafatalis is a partner from Research NZ. Emmanuel, well, welcome to the uh, panel. Thank you, Wallace. Tell Thank us, you much. yeah, tell us what, were you, what, what, what you were asking in the poll. So, what's your overall conclusion about these attitudes to diversity from the poll? Mm. Well, I, you know, I, I was just listening to what um, one of the other panel members said about, uh, you know, the level of acceptance of diversity amongst New Zealanders. Um, what was it? It was seventeen percent. Um, I, I actually look at look at it slightly differently because we we measured uh, New Zealand's New Zealanders' opinions of uh, whether they think. New Zealanders generally are accepting of different cultures and religions using the scale. So it ran from, obviously, uh, a total acceptance through to no acceptance whatsoever. And and you know really the you know the the, the perfect result that we would all want is that we would get a hundred percent of everyone saying that New Zealanders are totally accepting. You know that that if you like is nirvana. But we didn't actually get that. We got a lot of people's. At, at each each end of that scale, and the way I look at it is that, in, in addition to um, uh, noting the number who said New Zealanders are not accepting of different cultures and religions, I also think we need to take into account the number of people who sat on the fence. And when you do that, and they were over over a third of everyone that we spoke to was sitting on the fence. You know, they didn't say. They weren't prepared to say that New Zealanders are accepting of different cultures and religions. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, so if you take them into account, I think New Zealanders are polarised. We've got roughly half and half saying they're accepting, and the, and the other half are saying, uh, I'm unsure, or I'm, I'm definitely sure that they're not accepting of different cultures what and religions. What an interesting way to end this, uh, this, this panel. Uh, Emmanuel Kalafadalis, part of from Research NZ, thank you so much for being with us. But we can't take this for granted. Our government is focused on taking action to ensure that our society becomes even more resilient. New Zealand is growing in diversity in terms of age, ethnicities, cultures, beliefs, abilities, family composition, gender identities, and sexual orientation. Thank you. And the next question really touches on a little bit of that in terms of, and it's, the, it's about um, Auckland, and, it, and uh, it's, Auckland is, it says is lauded as uh, a, a diverse city in terms of where uh, citizens and suburbs are, are anything but diverse. And it's really a question was uh, around um, the an observation in terms of the relationship between tolerance and diversity in a mm. city that trumped as 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 being super diverse but actually um the question is saying that actually that people are living in a, in isolation um um but they're cheek by jowl and that's yeah um I, I think auckland's a very divided city in those terms so socioeconomically and culturally so i agree with that um, Steve Vertovic was the one who coined the word super diverse, and I use it quite frequently. And you mentioned that I'm doing a project on on understanding, in this case, visualising super diversity in Auckland. I think Steve and I would rather regret the super. It, it sounds as though it's sort of positive, and and what he meant, and what I certainly mean, is that super diversity complicates our lives because we have all of these. Um, diverse issues going on, legal status, uh, socioeconomic status, um, the impacts of inequality, diversity of religion, language, culture, religion, you know, all of that's in a, in a mix. So it's a very complex situation. I, I still would go back to what I said before and that tolerance is very much a function of contact and education. Well, bye, 67. Translating Mandarin on one hand and directing traffic with the other. 
skills like this, it's no wonder auctioneer Robert Ding is in demand. Third and final call at one million three hundred and eighty-one. It's going. It's going. It's sold. Congratulations, sir. Commiserations to the underbidders and. <laughs> and what I would like to see more of is using those institutions where we come together, particularly institutions like schools, to really begin to grapple with some of these difficult issues. So we've got this peculiar situation of being incredibly diverse, much more diverse than any other part of New Zealand, and yet at the same time, living very parallel lives. Mm -hmm. Is New Zealand losing its sense of social cohesion? It's under threat, according to a new report from Auckland Uni's Centre for Informed Futures. It says we are experiencing a perfect storm of economic, social and environmental transformations. Lead author on the report is Sir Peter Gluckman. Good morning. Yeah. In terms of a topic du jour, obviously vaccine mandates will be coming to mind for many people this morning as to is there some fracturing amongst our population um, as to social cohesion over vaccinations. Now, I would argue that, that there is some fracturing around the edges, but the great majority of us back the overall cause. Well, let's just, let's just peel that apart. Why are people refusing to get vaccinated? In general, it is because they do not trust science, they do not trust medicine, or they do not trust the government. Now, some of them may have good reasons for that, but we also know that people who are, are low in trust in, in that sense are almost more, are more susceptible to conspiracy theories. So while it may be a proportion of a society that's small, it's still a significant... Uh, and if we think about the, the protest in Parliament a few weeks ago, there was nothing holding that, that, logical, that group of people there mm. other than their combined anger and lack of trust in, the, in those who, were, who, who they saw as determining their lives. But, the Peter, let's around, suppose we are, but let's suppose the they represent, around. I don't know, 4%, 5% of the population. I mean, we're always going to have outliers on any issue, are we not? How well, does that on, imperil on, social on, cohesion? Blase, to be blasé about early warnings when we've seen phenomena of this nature grow in magnitude in democracies around the world, is New Zealand yet again putting its head in the sand? Uh, leadership is about seeing the future. Yes, we have to live in the present. Yes, we have to have operational ability but we must also see the vision. Where are we trying to go? And where do we lead our people so we don't end up in the swamp or in the bog, but we end up at the cutting edge of where the future is. And for New Zealand, New Zealand's future is multi-ethnic. It's indigenous. wake up to find your neighbour building a three-storey house next to your place nope. and there's nothing you can do about it? A new bill meant to make it easier and faster to build the homes we need is being labelled a disaster by urban planners. I'm joined here. In a rare moment of political unity, National and the government have joined forces on a bill they hope will see up to 100,000 new homes built over the next eight years. Labour and National are standing together to say an emphatic yes to housing in our backyards. In Auckland, Hamilton, Tauranga, Christchurch and Wellington, three-storey homes can now be built almost up to the fence line with no resource consent. Meaning we could be about to get up close and personal with our neighbours. There is definitely scope for these provisions for some properties to result in a very dramatic loss of sunlight as to lose almost all direct sunlighting over the entire winter period. The big issue also is privacy. Um, this will allow houses to be built very, very close front on to other houses on the same site with, for example, a living room looking into a principal bedroom four metres away.